Where are the bells? There are the bells. Here are the bells. Save all the bells. No, 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 no. Christmas time. Time of year to be thankful for your friends and your family and your life. At least, that's how you should feel, but not everyone does, of course. And it can be around this most magical time of year that some very bad things happen, despite all the cheerfulness we all see on the surface. Here are four missing persons found on Christmas Eve. Number four, the unresolved echoes of Sarah Vinick. 26-year-old Sarah Vinick from Collierville, Tennessee was a kind-hearted young lady who was trying to figure her way out in the world. She had a close bond with her family, especially her mother, who she'd call about five times a day, every day. Which is why on November 6th of 2019, when the calls stopped coming in, it was very out of character of Sarah and alarming. Her mother reported her missing, and all the while kept trying to call until a few days in, the phone finally died and then it was just going straight to Sarah's voicemail. Something was definitely wrong, but what? Well, the case took a darker turn when weeks after her disappearance, two hunters stumbled upon Sarah's lifeless body floating in a creek in Mississippi some 15 miles away from her home. The discovery, on Christmas Eve no less, was the worst news that anyone who knew Sarah could have heard. Investigators and the family were left grappling with several haunting questions. What exactly happened and who was responsible for placing Sarah's body in that remote creek? Enter Marty Miller, a determined private investigator hired by Sarah's distraught parents. Miller embarked on a painstaking journey, sifting through the last known movements of Sarah and tracing her steps back to a dark-colored pickup truck she was seen getting into outside her Cordoba Airbnb on the night of November 5th. But that was it. They couldn't see who the truck belonged to, a license plate, or who was driving. The case, already shrouded in mystery, then took an unexpected twist when a man claiming to know Sarah stepped forward. His accounts of the events, while unverified, painted a troubling picture. While he doesn't drive a pickup truck, he recounted picking up a distraught Sarah the following day and attempting to provide CPR while speeding to a hospital, and her sudden escape from his vehicle, and details that seemed as perplexing as they were harrowing. Despite the man's strange and extraordinary claims, investigators found themselves at a crossroads, weighing the credibility of his narrative against the stark reality of Sarah's untimely demise. Rumors and whispers swirled around town, talk of Sarah being trapped in a freezer, of her life being extinguished before her body was discarded, only fueled the fire of speculation. But the harsh truth was laid to bear when hunters stumbled upon her in that desolate creek. Ultimately, the medical examiner's conclusion of an accidental overdose did little to quell the turbulence of questions. How did Sarah, a vibrant young woman, end up overdosed and abandoned in a creek miles away from home? Well, someone had to put her there. The Marshall County Sheriff's Department stood firm in their belief that Sarah's body was deliberately dumped, but despite following up on that black truck and the man who said he performed CPR, today, her case still remains a mystery. Number 3. Christmas without closure. In the quaint, serene landscapes of Blount County, Alabama, the joyous spirit of Christmas was cut short when on Christmas Day of 2017, a chilling discovery was made. The body of 18-year-old Christian Boyle was found, marking a tragic end to his life and the beginning of a painful quest for answers that have persisted through the years. Christian was known for his lively personality, a young man with a big heart and infectious smile. His mother, Carrie Payne, recalls him as a person brimming with life, love, and a particular fondness for Christmas. His untimely death left a void in the lives of his loved ones, his mother now facing subsequent Christmases with a heavy heart 
and a longing for justice rather than festive cheer. So, what happened? Well, the circumstances surrounding his death were mysterious and unsettling. It was a vital tip that led investigators to the grim scene on Coal Branch Road, where Christian was found, shot outside his car, weeks after he had mysteriously disappeared. His family was adamant that Christian wouldn't have left on his own accord, especially leaving behind his final paycheck and without a word to his mother. As the months passed, the case grew cold with no significant leads whatsoever. There were no suspects or arrests, leaving the family in a torturous limbo of unanswered questions. However, in 2020, a faint glimmer of hope emerged as the cold case team in Montgomery took up Christian's case. This development offered a ray of hope, however, Kerry remained cautiously optimistic, knowing all too well the pain of unfulfilled expectations. Amid swirling rumors and half-whispered theories about the motives and identity of the perpetrator, Carrie Payne's plea was simple yet profound. She implored anyone with information to come forward to end their silence and help bring closure to a family torn apart by tragedy. As the story of what exactly happened to Christian Boyle remains a mystery, his memory continues to weigh on those in Blount County, especially around Christmas time. If you know anything about this case, please call Crime Stoppers at 205-254-7777. There's also a cash reward. Number two, Echoes in the Wilderness. Near Ontario, Canada, where the bustle of city life fades into the tranquility of rural landscapes, a mystery that would haunt the community of Hamilton unfolded when Monica Chissar disappeared. She was a 28-year-old woman whose spirit for adventure led her down a path that would ultimately intertwine with a grim fate. Monica lived what you would call a bohemian lifestyle. She was carefree, a huge lover of travel. She didn't care about any destination in particular. For her, it was all about the journey. That journey, however, took an unexpected turn on July 11th of 2018 when she was last seen at the corner of Parkdale Avenue North and Barton Street East. The beer store's parking lot, where she was dropped off with plans to stay with a friend, would be the last place she was ever seen alive. The months rolled by, with autumn leaves giving way to winter's chill, yet still there was no word from Monica. Her silence on social media, a platform she once used to share her adventures, raised some red flags, but at the same time, she was the type who might just drop all that stuff to get closer to nature. It was in September, with the absence of her presence growing more conspicuous that her loved ones officially reported her missing. And then, on a cold Christmas Eve in 2019, in a secluded wooded area near Highway 6 and Southgate Road 10 near Mount Forest, a father and son stumbled upon a discovery that would bring a tragic closure to the prolonged search. It was here, about 85 miles from where she was last seen, that Monica's remains were found, ending the haunting mystery of her whereabouts but igniting a new quest for justice. The investigation, led by the Ontario Provincial Police and Hamilton Police, was meticulous and while they never divulged how exactly she died or what evidence they uncovered, it culminated in a significant breakthrough over a year and a half after Monica's remains were discovered. In a turn of events that many didn't see coming, 40-year-old Ahmet Nikki, a man with no fixed address, and someone who had just returned from Europe was arrested and charged with second-degree murder and indignity to a human body. Detective Mary Louise Kearns of the OPP and Detective Sergeant Jim Callender of the Hamilton Police provided updates as it appeared Ahmed had fled shortly after the murder and the authorities wanted to keep a low profile on the case in the hopes that that would aid in the suspect feeling like things had cooled down and that it was safe for him to return. And they have been tracking his every move all along. Ahmet now awaits his day in court. 
and there's sure to be more details of the case revealed. And along with that, hopefully more closure for those who were closest to Monica. A kind woman who loved to travel, and apparently just met up with the wrong person at the wrong time. Number 1. The Shadows of Kinnidge Road The initial thread on this story was a missing person inquiry, made particularly poignant as it unfolded during a festive period of the year. In Bristol, England, Joanna Yeats, 25-year-old talented landscape architect, had vanished without a trace, leaving a void filled with anxious speculation. However, the narrative took a grim turn on Christmas morning, when a discovery transformed the missing person case into a murder investigation, and Yeats's frozen body was found by a couple walking their dog on a snowy roadside verge. The unraveling of this mystery led to a figure not far from Yeats's own doorstep, her neighbor, Vincent Tabak, a Dutch-born engineer. The proximity of the perpetrator, living just a wall away, added a layer of eerie closeness to the tragedy. They all lived in a large house that had been divided into different apartments. Joanna lived in one of them with her boyfriend. And on December 19th, after a weekend away, he returned to find his girlfriend wasn't home and that their cat seemed to have been neglected. He called her, and that's when he heard the ringing coming from her phone, which was inside the pocket of her coat, still in the flat. A few hours later, at around midnight, he then reported her missing. The investigation saw that two nights prior, Joanna had gone out with some colleagues to a few bars. She was seen that night on CCTV cameras at around 8.10 p.m. leaving a supermarket. At 8.30, she texted with a friend about Christmas Eve plans. And the last known footage of her was from a Tesco Express at 8.40 p.m. where she bought a pizza. The investigation that ensued was large was comprised of 80 detectives and civilian staff, and it became one of the biggest investigations ever in the area, and ultimately pointed to Vincent. Despite his eventual confession, the precise details of what transpired on that fateful night of December 17th in Flat 1 at 44 Caninge Road remained unclear. Tabak's version of the events revealed only at the trial painted a scene that began with an innocent invitation for a drink, a neighborly thing to do. He claimed a flirtatious comment from Yeats led him to misinterpret her intentions. He thought she wanted to be with him, and so when he went in for a kiss, instead of her warm embrace, it was met with a scream. He tried to calm her down, but things escalated quickly when she wouldn't be quiet. In his panic to silence her, Tabak described how he ended her life, strangling her with his bare hands. However, the police and prosecution saw through the holes in his account, suggesting a more sinister motive, possibly a sexual attack driven by a perverse thrill of control and dominance, because the state of the crime scene told its own story. The chaos in the hallways with marks all along the walls the earring under the duvet in the bedroom, and the delay in moving Yeats's body hinted at a struggle that perhaps spanned multiple rooms and moments. The most damning evidence against Tabak was the 43 injuries found on Yeats's body, suggesting a far more violent encounter than he admitted to. Yeats's final moments, as pieced together by the investigation, spoke of a routine evening turned into a nightmare. Tabak, meanwhile, attempted to weave a web of deception. His efforts to mislead the investigation by framing the landlord and his inconsistent accounts only added layers of complexity to the case. However, the advancement of forensic science, particularly the damning DNA evidence, dismantled his facade of innocence. In the courtroom, Tabak's narrative crumbled under the weight of evidence and scrutiny. His attempt to blur the lines between manslaughter and murder and his feigned memory lapses did little to shield him from the truth. The police, despite facing criticism for certain aspects of the investigation, ultimately pieced together the puzzle of Joanna Yeats's untimely demise. As a result, 
Tabak received a life sentence, will now spend the rest of his life behind bars. So there were four missing persons found on Christmas. I'm Andrew, and I want to thank you for tuning in. If you like this, please subscribe so we can reach you with new content that we're putting out each and every week. We have episodes on this channel coming out every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, so we hope you do come on back. Thank you for all your support and for tuning in. Happy holidays, and I'll see you in the next one.